Good morning. It is the middle of March and it's starting to feel like spring. Now don't get me wrong, it's not spring yet here in Nova Scotia. I know many places around the world it is, but here it's still pre-spring. That's the way to think of it. We still could have snow, although honestly it wouldn't last very long if we did have snow. Temperatures today, right now, about two degrees Celsius, so just above freezing. Beautiful clear skies though. But it is still a bit chilly, as I mentioned. But what a great day to be in the woods. And uh, I brought you out to share my experience with you. But I have another reason for coming out today. This is a hike in a coffee video and a chat. And I have another YouTube bushcrafter that I want to talk about. Someone many of us know, most of us I would think know. Uh, but this one's Canadian and a personal friend of mine. All right, what I'm going to do is continue on my hike. I think there's some interesting things to see here. I doubt there's very many signs of springs, but if I see anything, I'll make sure to record it for you. All right, let's get going. Literally two steps beyond where I just recorded my introduction, I found this and I thought this might be of interest. Black spruce tree with its bark half peeled off. Uh, let's see how far up it goes. There we go. I know what caused it. Do you? Let me know in the comments. I just wanted to share this with you. The last time I was out here, that was all ice. All of it. I'm punky ice, mind you, but ice nonetheless. And that's what about a week of warmer temperatures and heavy rain will do. Amazing. As you can see, I had to take my jacket off because I was starting to warm up a little bit too much. I'll be putting it back on. It's not that warm. Just wanted to cool off a bit while I showed you this. All right, let's see what else we can find. One of the many coves and inlets here on Susie Lake. What a beautiful spot. A bit breezy as you can see. One of those places you can sit down with a cup of coffee, lose yourself in thought, and restore your soul. All right, I haven't yet reached my destination where I'll be having our coffee and chat, but uh, the wise woodsmen will take advantage of any resources they come across when they have the opportunity. And here's an opportunity right in my path, a dead birch tree laying on the ground. You can see another segment of it there. There's the stump with my staff leaning against it. So why am I showing you this? Well, I know that I'm going to be building a fire in a wood stove and uh, I like using birch for birch bark, that is, for fire lighter. And now it's available to me just about everywhere. But why would I just not stop, bend over, and grab some off of this dead birch while I can? The point I'm trying to make is the bark on this dead birch will light up just as effectively as bark pulled off of a living tree. In fact, I think I would like to recommend to everybody who doesn't already do this, take the birch off of the ground and not off of the living tree. Now, unless you cut right through into the sapwood and gird the tree, which is to go all the way around the outside, you're not going to kill the tree, but it is going to be unsightly, can leave a scar, an opening where infection can get in. So how much better is it just to pick it up off of the ground like I'm about to do? All right, let's keep moving. All right, I just wanted to show you this because just to prove that it's not spring yet, just in case you weren't quite sure I was telling you the truth, there's still ice in the little, some of the inlets and coves like this one. Of course, it's being held in there by the wind and the fact that for most of the day it is shaded, although the sun is about to come on it, that'll reduce it dramatically, but there's still some ice and snow in the woods. What a beautiful spot this is, right? All right, I have reached my destination. First time I've been here since probably last fall, all the deep snow we had over the winter 
made it too much of a challenge and I chose easier to get to locations. Well, it stood up more or less. Uh, someone has been here and they're allowed. I mean, it is an open wilderness for the public, but uh, it's still quite a mess left behind. And the winter has taken its toll on things like my bench here. I think that's going to have to be scrapped to start over again. Fire pit is quite a mess. No big deal. I'll get a shovel next time I'm out and clean that out. They've gone, whoever it was, gone through most of my store of firewood though and didn't replace it. That's unfortunate. Okay, I'm here though. Happy to be here. This just, every year, this is going to be what I, I face when I come out here. Clean up time, a little rehabilitation, and then I can enjoy it all summer and into the fall. As long as somebody else doesn't come along and disrespect it. Okay, so what am I going to do? Now, now that I'm here, I'm going to drop my pack, start pulling things out, set up my camp for the day, and, uh, and then we'll get ready to have coffee. All right, as I quickly scan my campsite before I go looking for some firewood, let's see if there's any clues here to who this Canadian bushcraft legend could be. So I know you can't see which wood stove it is in that leather case you will in a minute, but you can see my kettle, you can see my kuksa, you can see my hammock chair, and you can see my saw. Those are all clues to who this person could be. All right, from here I just have to head out and see if I can find some dead standing to create a fire in my firebox stove. Oh, there's another hint. All right, let's get going. All right, yeah, this looks okay. So I don't need a whole lot of firewood for cooking today. So this is a all I'm gonna need. Feels good. It is red maple. Dead standing, top is broken off. This is where I like to look a lot for my dead standing is clusters of red maple. They tend to grow in clusters. They look like an oversized bush. They, they are a tree, but they never grow to the big sizes like other maples, sugar maples will, or any of the other hardwoods around here. So they tend to grow in clusters. And when they do, some of them will shoot up faster, stronger, block out all the access to nutrients and sunlight that other shoots will will, uh, won't get it as a result, and they, some of them die off. And they make good dead standing firewood, like this piece right here. This is more than enough for a number of fires for me. And uh, okay, yeah, let's just take this down, put my gloves on. This will leave me wood for future fires as well. Now my saw, I did mention this is one of my clues. This is my Silky Gomboy and uh, second blade on it, of course, because I did snap the other one. That can happen if you're not paying attention. But I think it was this person who introduced me to Silky Saws, this, this bushcraft legend that I'm gonna talk about. So we'll take the tree off. It is, it's not really heavy, so it is leaning kind of this way, but I wanna put some counter pressure on it. Catches up here. There we go. Oh yeah, that's looking good. All right, let me drag that back to my campsite and we'll cut up a few pieces off it for firewood. I'm gonna get a couple pieces off this. I think maybe three sections will be all I need. This, uh, what have I got? Two and a half? At the most, two and a half inch diameter. And I want it to be about five inches in length max because the firebox stove only accommodates about five inches in length. Maybe I'll just take it down to four and a half inches and go from there. Let's have a look at this. Oh yeah, beautiful, beautiful wood. All right, I'm gonna cut down maybe three, maybe four, just in case I need extras, and uh, then we'll split those up. All right, this is one place where I'm gonna differ with the person we're gonna be talking about in a few minutes time. He prefers to use an ax. 
Nothing wrong with an axe. I love like using an axe myself. But for this little bit of wood and for the weight that I was going to be carrying out today, I thought I would leave the axe at home and just go with my Scrama 200. It does a great job of splitting. Now my block is not the most stable, but I think now neither is my baton as far as that goes. But that's what the Scrama does. Let's see. Oh, that is beautiful. Yep, yep. Get the other piece. Split this into some little pieces. I get enough for a fire. And then we'll come back. I think I need to start with lunch before coffee, though. Yep. This is going to be nice wood. Must be, oh, there's the end of my baton. All right, now I gotta go looking for a baton. Yep, time for another baton. All right, I have my birch bark for fire starter. I have my maple all split down for fuel. Now I just need a little bit of kindling. So this is my go-to kindling, at least in this area. The small inner super fine stuff that you'll get under spruce trees, fir trees, occasionally pine trees, but mostly spruce and fir. Something I learned, how old am I now? Yeah, okay. 50, more than 50 years ago, let's say closer to between 55 and 60 years ago, I learned this trick. Uh, my father invited a friend over to the cottage to enjoy an adult beverage. I was just a young boy, 10, 9, 10 years old. And the old fellow decided to show me some of the tricks of the woods. And one of the things he showed me was to come, in, if it's raining when you're out, or wet at all, or snowy, get in underneath the branches of the conifer trees and look for this, the little dead stuff. Chances are is that it's dry or near dry anyway. And of course, test for the snap and it just snaps right off, which means this is the, this is the stuff you're looking for right here. Get a bundle of it. I think that birch or that maple is dry enough. I'm not gonna need a whole lot of kindling, but best, rule or suggestion I give you is get more than you think you're going to need. If that looks like enough, it's not. That's probably twice that to start my fire, maybe a little bit more, and I'll get twice that just in case. All right, I gotta move around because there's not a lot on this tree. I guess I've been here to this well before. All right, I'll move around and see what else I can find. All right, I have my birch bark as far as fire starter. I have my twigs, my conifer twigs as kindling. I have my maple splits as fuel. I have cleared off a spot off of the ground here. The ground is nice and wet, but I just do this more for uh, out of habit than anything else. This is a fiberglass mat that I picked up off of Amazon, and it's nice to have and put under wood stoves like this, regardless of how safe it is. This is just an extra layer of protection. Good practice to get into because fire bands will be here all too soon and any time that the fire bands are on, aren't on and I can have a fire, I will of course, but I do want to be safe. So that's there. My firebox stove, you may or may not be able to see it here in shadow, but pull the fire sticks out, open it up, pan falls off, fire grate is down inside, Slide the ash pan in, all set to go, right? All right, I have everything ready to go, but before I light my fire, I want to go down to the lake's edge and get my kettle full of water. That's plenty. All right. All right, let's get the fire started. A little bit of birch bark, won't need too much inside. Take a little bit here and scrape it with my blade or I can do this, which is just to fuzz it into very fine pieces and lay it on top here, like that. Fire steel. There we go, that's better. I don't know what was that was all about. Drop that down inside. That bundle of twigs all broken up. 
This is going to make a smoky mess for a minute or two. And then when it catches on, it'll just roar up into flame. Get the rest of my birch bark out of the way. As well as my kindling. There's nothing like birch bark and spruce or fir twigs to really catch on. Smoky, but full of resin and oils. Catches on really, really fast. Put a few sticks in. All right, it'll take a minute before my fire is established well enough for me to put the fire sticks back on and then the kettle, and that's when I'll bring it back. So I almost didn't include this portion in the video, uh, only because you've seen it before, but then I realized one of my clues is in here. So I am just putting together my lunch, which is my note meal. I think I've mentioned, well, actually I have a whole video on it if you're interested. It's a replacement for oatmeal. There's no oatmeal in it, but there's a lot of other good nutritious things inside. Pretty much instant, a little bit of water, let it set for a few seconds and it's ready to go. But here's the clue that I wanted to show you. It's a hand carved spoon. Now this is one of mine. I carved this. I kind of got into it. I haven't done a lot of spoon carving recently and I'm not certainly anything but a professional, but it is very enjoyable. And I believe it may well have been the person we're going to be talking about who inspired me to carve my own spoons. I didn't think it was something that just anybody could do. And yeah, so. Here's my carved spoon in honor of that person. Let's get the water in there. Now I will rehydrate my lunch, enjoy it, and then I'll come back to be making the coffee after that. That's all the water that needs. If you are interested in this note meal, uh, I can put a link to that video at the end of this one. It only takes a minute or two for it to rehydrate and boy does it ever taste good. However, when I'm finished lunch, the kettle will go back on the stove, I'll make some water, I'll make some coffee, and then we'll have our chat. All right, these are your last two clues and then my coffee will be made and we will start our chat. So, next clue, second last, is this, the Kapilka. This is the Kapilka Kuksa. And I know this person enjoyed using this, and so do I. In fact, I need to use it more often. Uh, this is the smaller of the two. That's where they started out was with the smaller of the two and then moved up to the bigger of the two, eight ounce and then the larger being 10 ounce. By the way, if you're interested, I do have a video on my whole Kapilka collection, pretty much. Last clue. This person loves coffee in the woods, as do I, as do many of you. But this person's taste in coffee are differ <laughs> considerably from mine. This person enjoys a good cup. All right, I don't know if I can say that with a straight face. He enjoys a cup of instant coffee, the three-in-one instant coffees. Um, I can't drink that, sorry. But what I can drink in terms of instant is this Starbucks Via. So in honor of this person, I will have a Starbucks Via. Still not my preferred cup of coffee, of course. Put that in my pocket. And... At least it's instant coffee, so that's as close to what this person drinks as I can get. And that should be enough, all right. I had to reposition the camera and we'll have our chat. All right, let's start out with a taste test. No, it's still instant coffee, sorry. <laughs> but I can drink it. Okay, I'm sure everybody has figured out by now, those of you who know these people, it's Mike and Josie Barton from the Bushcraft Barton's channel on YouTube. So in my personal journey in reintroducing myself to bushcraft, I mean, it wasn't called that when I was growing up, it was just playing in the woods, but 
When I became aware of the phenomenon of bushcraft and the channels on YouTube, I wanted to see if there were any Canadians out there who had a bushcraft channel. So in searching, Mike's channel came to the front of the pack, of course, and I immediately started to watch Mike's channel, Mike's videos, and was just so impressed with the quality of Mike's instruction. I mean, he had such an unpretentious, down-to-earth way of sharing his knowledge and experience with us that it influenced, me, influenced me heavily going forward in my own reintroduction and even into my YouTube channel itself. I mean, Mike was sharing a lifetime of experience learned from the old masters of the woods and First Nations people of Quebec, where Mike lives, of course, and he, he, he lived it. He really did. He, he knew what he was talking about and he shared his information freely. It's, and I truly appreciate that as I'm sure many of you do as well. Well, I had the good opportunity of meeting Mike in the summer of 2016. Here in Nova Scotia, the Nova Scotia Bushcraft Association held their first annual gathering. They had reached out to Mike and asked if, they would, if he would like to join, and Mike and Josie were looking for a place to have summer vacation, so they came to Nova Scotia. And that's where I met Mike, meeting my heroes. You know, it, it, was, it was great. And we struck up a friendship immediately. It was just so easy to do so with Mike. Just to, We became fast friends, as did Josie and Gina, my wife Gina. We, they also became friends, and we continue to be friends until this day. And, um, you know, Mike must have enjoyed his time here because he came back the following year, 2017, for the second annual Bushcraft Gathering. Now, I wasn't a YouTube person the first year. Actually, I started my uh, YouTube channel or my videos, started recording videos the very right after that first gathering. But by the time the second gathering came around and Mike was here, I had started making videos. So I asked Mike if he would agree to an on-camera uh, on interview, and he did. And we had a great time. It was just full of laughs and full of just rambling topics, everything from uh, getting into bushcraft for beginners to uh, choosing knives and you name it, all kinds of things. I think coffee was probably in there as well. And uh, it was a great time. I, you know, we spent a lot of time just sitting around the fire chatting, having laughs, having a good time. And it was just so easy to be with Mike. And... Uh, Okay, I wish this was good news, folks, because Mike has been plagued with a number of issues. And the first one I'll share with you that Mike shared with me is that his YouTube channel was hacked. It was hijacked. It was taken control of by persons unknown. He lost control of his channel. Now, we appealed to YouTube, and he was successful in getting his channel back. But shortly thereafter, YouTube themselves canceled his channel stating that he was in violation of community guidelines. I, I don't know how they came to that conclusion. The only thing I can think of, it was something that occurred while the channel was not under his control. Mike continues to appeal, but so far he's been unsuccessful in getting his channel back. And as Mike puts it, 14 years of hard work up in smoke. That must have been heartbreaking for Mike. And it is to us because the wealth of knowledge that was out there on Mike's channel is just not available to us any longer. And that's just, it's just like a theft, really. It's, it's truly unfortunate that we have lost Mike's channel. Well, that's not all. That's not the only thing that has happened in Mike's life. So Mike shared with me and gave me permission to share with you that his health is not good. Mike suffers chronic and severe headaches almost on a daily basis. As Mike puts it, he feels like a prisoner in his own body. Some days the headaches are so, so severe that he's barely functional. And I, I can't imagine how hard that is on him and Josie as well, of course. But those who know Mike know that he has a strong and abiding faith in God. And as Mike puts it, God has a plan for him. He doesn't know why these challenges have been placed in his path, but he believes that God has a plan that is yet to be revealed, and he knows that all will work out. That, that, to have that type of a strong faith is just a true testament to the character of Mike Barton, for sure. Uh, it's hard. It really is hard. I know it must be hard for him. I asked Mike if there was anything that we could do or that I could do and that I could pass on to you. And Mike did ask that 
I ask you to keep him in your prayers. If you're a person of prayer, ask God to reveal to Mike why he is having these issues and if it's his will to heal them of them. If you're not a person of prayer, then at least keep them in your thoughts. Let those positive thoughts go out there. It is hard. It's even hard to talk about, of course. I guess if there was one lesson I personally take from this is don't take life for granted. This is something that it occurred to Mike, but it could occur to any of us. And I don't mean the loss of a YouTube channel. I mean, that's bad enough. But to be afflicted with the chronic headaches that Mike has is, is so debilitating. I, I just can't imagine how hard it is to go forward for him. All right, uh, that has been less than fun to talk about, but I think important to get out there. I wish there was a way I could ask you to get in contact with Mike. His channel's not there for you to leave comments for him. You are welcome to leave comments under this video that I'll make sure that Mike is aware of. And if he wants to, then he, he's, I welcome him to chime in and answer those comments back to you. If there's another means of reaching out to Mike, uh, I'll find out and uh, share that with you as well in this video, underneath the video, if there's any links or anything, I don't know uh, what there might be. But I wish there was better news on Mike and Josie Barton and the channel YouTube or Bushcraft Bartons. Uh, folks, don't take life for granted, but do get out and explore and take that path less traveled because you know it will make all the difference. Bye for now.